Test one, two. Test one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five. Hello. Hello. It does not feel that late, but it is. So that's kind of weird. Let me put on some music for you guys while we were waiting along and uh, getting ready to get this thing, this bad boy started up. Alright, I want to make sure that you guys are here and chilling with me before I start something. I get a decent amount of viewership for these things and I want to make sure everyone's here to... Because I don't feel like they... I could just wait till tomorrow to talk about this, but it's right fresh in my mind because I just came from there. So if you're in chat, give me a hello, give me a howdy, give me a how do you do. And uh, tell your friends because I do want to see who's around and, and who's doing what and uh, if you guys want to actually listen to this tonight. So yeah, viewer list currently unavailable. Excellent stuff. Um, I know it's a little bit late, so <sighs> hello Guppy, hello crew. Um, let's see here. Where to begin? First of all, um, hello everybody. If you are new to the Mott Vlog, it is something I do pretty much on a regular monthly basis. And I haven't had one in about a month or so, so I figured I'd add another one in. Um, I've been doing this for about a year now, and I've really enjoyed doing the vlog. So hopefully you guys have enjoyed it too. I might sound like a little bit depressed, but I'm just trying to be a bit quieter because it's like, it's yeah, it's, it's pretty early. Maybe not as early as it is for Carmina, but it's pretty early. It's 1.30. It's 1.43 on the East Coast of America in upstate New York. Beautiful upstate New York where it is 18 degrees Fahrenheit on February the 19th, a Friday. So, yeah, that's what's going on here. Um, So, obviously, I've been pretty busy, as you guys may imagine. For the past week, I have been in Phoenix, beautiful Phoenix, Arizona, I might add. And there were some amazing things about being there. And then there were some not so great things, which I will touch on. Nothing, of course, having to do with the work that I did, the people that I was with, or where I was. But we'll talk about that in a moment. Um, 
so yeah, we'll talk about that momentarily. Really, 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 let me just clarify and say that I had a lot of fun while I was there. And I did, I wanted to make sure that before I got into anything, I wanted to thank Sunsfin and Sajidine, uh, as they provided me with such hospitality. Um, Michelle, Purge's girlfriend as well, was really, really, really sweet and made some amazing food for us. And it was absolutely an amazing time in regards to just working and, and having fun. And, 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 you know, the great thing about Moonduck is I think a lot of people don't realize is that it's a combination of a working environment, but doing so with your friends. All of the people there are my friends. We've become really, really good friends. And it's been an amazing experience to be with everybody and grow and, and just have an amazing time. So... I definitely wanted to give them the biggest shout out of all time. Uh, I felt like sometimes I overstayed my welcome because I think uh, when you have like slacks and you have JJ already in the house and then you come in and you're like, there's a there's a, a hotel room for you, but you just you feel more comfortable in the house and you're like, oh, I kind of feel like I'm infringing. I think they had a, a pretty good time with me, though. I think we had a lot of fun. So hello to everybody that is just joining, by the way. So like I said, this is a vlog that I do pretty often, and uh, especially after big events, I want to talk about the good and the bad, which there wasn't much of, um, and I wanted to make sure I hit, hit this up while it was fresh. So I just got home about an hour ago, maybe about two hours ago, um, from from Phoenix. The flights were not particularly good, but so I went out on the 11th. On February the 11th, I went out and... Uh, I, you know the flights there were pretty damn good. You know they we had the, they had the new Airbus A320 or 330 or something like that. I've been on enough airplanes and I was realized like certain airplanes are amazing and certain airplanes suck ass. The good thing about Airbus is they're like okay, well we could be like Boeing and like have shitty airplanes and like just they're really cramped and shitty, or we can actually like give people space, even the people in the back rows. And they did a really good job with that. So already my trip was starting out amazingly. You know, I was having, I was feeling really good going to Phoenix. I got to Phoenix. Uh, Shannon picked me and uh, Zayori up because we were on the same flight. He almost missed his flight. It was funny because I had to rush. We actually got, we had to de-ice the plane in Albany, which then I threw, uh, flew through Philadelphia. And, uh, and so I... And Andrew had missed his first flight. He got there a little too late, and I think his his father dropped him off at the wrong, or somebody dropped him off at the wrong terminal. And so, and he also <laughs> he had to take a crap, so he missed his flight because he got dropped off the wrong terminal, and he and he had to take a crap. And so, pretty much what happens is when you when you miss your flight, and you try to get on another one, you get on standby, and standby is essentially it's pretty much like okay, you have to hope someone misses their flight. And I texted him, and I'm like, listen, I might actually be late, dude. You might be taking my spot on this plane because I had to rush from terminal to terminal, and I'm, I am somehow got there in time. And I saw Andrew, and he's, like, over there, and he's, like, sitting in a chair, just, like, just like waiting to get on, like, waiting for the standby list. There's, like, I see five other people with him, and I'm like, oh, fuck, that sucks. I felt so bad. And I, like, waved to Andrew, and I'm just like, he's like, hey, and I'm like, hey, and I'm like, oh, shit, this is really bad. I feel bad now. But anyways, I get on the plane, I see him come on, and I'm like, yes, okay, he made it good, good stuff. But we are in completely different rows, so that was uh, that was something that was pretty funny. Anyways, we drew, we flew we flew to Phoenix. The, like I said, the Airbus is is an amazing company. I think I'm really really happy with and. For like some of you are like, who fucking gives a shit about airplanes, man? Who fucking cares? It's an airplane. Who who fucking gives a shit, right? For me, it's very important, especially for people that travel a lot. It is very important, especially if you're in the middle row, how comfortable the plane is. And that Airbus A320, I think it was an A320 or an A330, uh, 415 revision was extraordinarily comfortable to be a part of, which is... So if you ever... if you're Not that you guys really have choice because... You don't decide what plane you fly, which is really annoying. Like, if you could decide what plane you flew, I would always recommend Airbus. So I'll try not to swear. I like swearing. That's something that I also want to talk about a little bit. And I, I discussed this with Purge, but we'll talk about that later. So we get to Phoenix. You know, we have a day to set up and plan. I see JJ. I see Slacks. Purge comes in a little bit later. And we essentially hang out. We have a good time, you know. 
I don't remember what we did for the first night other than like prepare. I don't think we went out. Not that I can remember. We went out twice. One was for Thai food. The other was for, I think, Red Robin. And then, oh, we went out for pizza the third night. Yeah, so I think that's the only times we went out. I think Nikki's here. She could she can clarify more. Um, unless you peace out. No, I modded her. She should be modded. Shout out to her. Okay, yeah, she's already a, a moderator. Anyways, so for the first night, we just, like, get there and... So I should clarify that Purge has, of course, a girlfriend, and I'm pretty good friends with Purge, but I don't really know Michelle. I met her at one of the summits way back in the day or something like that. I never really talked to her, and she's an awesome person. Uh, you know, of course, uh, Purge and Michelle and Nikki often went out to grocery shop, and I thought that was the coolest thing ever. Um, and they just, you know, we had the best mood, we had the best food made for us. It was always great. Uh, I can't remember what we had for the first night. Anyways, we get there and we set up. So the way you have to figure this, like we're at, it's not a studio, right? Where we're using, we're using Shannon's house to actually make this tournament happen. And I thought that was very interesting. So it's a limited amount of space, but it's enough to actually make a studio work, it, which is really interesting too. Like it, I think on stream, cause we had this couch and the couch was a little bit bad for the green screen, but I think we, we did a pretty good job i say we i didn't really do much but i think as a whole everybody did a pretty good job when it came to setting up the the streams and and testing everything and making sure everything worked there was some audio issues uh for the first couple of days but other than that it was pretty great um really what we wanted to accomplish with the with the stream and with the games is that we would have a lot of fun there would be some really good analysis coming out from purge and grant when he arrived later um, some of the cast would be serious. Some of them would be a bit funnier, which is something I need to work on. But that's a completely different story. And I felt like my cast were really, really good, all things considered. But yeah, so we get there. It's warm out. We hang out. You know, we we set up the stream. Um, and yeah, I mean, pretty much we just we just set up the stream and then we just chill. We just like we we hang around. We chill. You know, we're not really playing Dota or anything like that. We're just hanging around and. And having a good time shooting the shit and doing doing our stuff. And then the, the first day starts. And pretty much what happened was that, you know, and I, I might have some stories later on down the road. It's just tough to actually think about what to talk about. Like, the tournament went super well. There were no delays, really. The, there were no real issues when it came to technical stuff. And, of course, for those of you that don't already know this, Pimp Uncle is fucking insanely good at what he does. He is a god. I, I was so impressed with the way he handled audio. He handled the video aspect, instant replay. The amount of production one person could do, you, you would like think that there's like two or three people there like helping him with production for that stream. And this is one guy who fucking is, he's got three monitors. His Dota is like half the size of his first monitor. And, like, he's got OBS and all that shit on the same monitor and, like, so much stuff that he has to, like... The multitasking required for what he does is insane. It's actually ridiculous. The amount of work JJ put in was outstanding. And, yeah, it was pretty nuts. So, for the first night we were there, uh, I felt like I wasn't accomplishing anything. I felt like I didn't really bring anything to the tournament obviously i was casting so that's one thing i brought to the tournament but i wanted to do more and so that's where the mott video came from the mottism video came from now for obvious reasons we didn't want to actually have to use the word mottism on twitch stream and i like you could use it here in the context of me being on my stream but using the term mottism um that will no undoubtedly be on you know the reddit front page which it was and on YouTube and on Twitch stream with like 20 to 30,000 to 40,000 viewers is very dangerous. And that's what I thought. Um, and that's what Purge thought too. And he, he made it known. And so I was like 50 shades of gray was a thing that happened in Moonduck and chill where I would take a passage of 50 shades of gray and read it randomly while we were just chilling on stream. And everyone seemed to really enjoy it for some reason. I guess because, so the thing that you have to understand my humor, um, if you don't really know me, is 
And this doesn't come across on stream. My humor is very, I wouldn't say dirty, but it's boisterous, loud, obnoxious, and a bit, um, I wouldn't say lewd. I would say, I cuss a lot. I, I swear a lot, which some people don't like, and I can understand that, but I, I really like to add because I feel like I feel like curses are like conversational enhancers. Honestly, I feel like it's a good way to actually just punctuate something because it's something that people sometimes don't expect. And if used in the right circumstances, it's funny to me. I don't know why that's the case. That's always how it's been. Like I when I was a kid, that's how I got laughs by by saying ridiculous things. And so that's kind of what I thought about doing Fifty Suits of Grey. And so I had the idea. I was like, and because people kept asking me, it, it, it's either one thing or the other. It's it's either Mott Nips or it's Fifty Shades of Mott. People want to he see these things. They want to hear things. And so it wasn't until the end of the first night when I was like, we were trying to figure out content, trying to figure out what to do. I'm like, what can I do that's like me? Like That's like 100% uniquely me. Something that is known for me. And I'm like, Fifty Shades of Grey. What the fuck? Of course. Fifty Shades of Grey. Absolutely. That's something that we need to do. That's something we need to have that happen. And... I will say this, I am not the biggest content creator. I think people know that. They know me for my commentary. They don't really know me for much else. Uh, but I want to try to change that. And, and that's why I sat down in front of the computer and I just started typing out a rough draft, a rough script of what I thought a video would be of Fifty Shades of Grey. Um, it was sort of in Slack's style because I knew he was going to be the one helping me work on it and editing it. Um, so it really was important to me for him to be involved with it and I, I i we had a couple of different versions of it but again the biggest thing that we had to take out was the term motism um because again it's a little offensive to some people which is understandable what are you going to do and so what happened is we just wrote out a script and we decided here's what it's going to be like and a lot of the script was like Cut to Mott reading a passage of Fifty Shades of Grey to JJ uh, while he's, you know, working on the computer. <laughs> and, like, so what happens is, because Fifty Shades of Grey is such a ridiculously stupid fucking book, there are so many sentences that have just... It's it's smut. It is smut in a nutshell. If, you, if you're looking for, like, actual, like, it's like a bad fanfic, except it's a book that millions of people have bought for whatever reason we bought it we like the night we went out to um the, the night we actually filmed it we went out to a pizza place and we had to pick up um we had to pick up we you know well i we went there there's a barnes and noble nearby and we're like let's go and get 50 shades of mont or 50 shades of gray and so we went and got it also i picked up one piece and full metal, full metal alchemist the first three volumes which was for both of them, by the way, which is really good because I love Full Metal Alchemist and I wanted to start reading One Piece, which is a whole other story that I'll talk about later. So we go out and we buy it. We come back. And the, the entire time, the entire time, I'm just like, guys, I don't know about this. I, you know, I don't really know if this is great. This seems a little weird. I, I don't think it's funny. I, I just, I'm not sold. But... Slacks immediately when I started like when I was starting to be negative Slacks is like no let's go let's do this let's all right I'm gonna get the camera we're gonna start doing this stuff and everyone's gonna stay around and the whole vibe was like nobody really wanted to do it except Slacks and then that that work ethic that that emotion kind of got to all of us and all of a sudden we're super into this and I start acting and I start just reading lines and uh it's just funny the entire time. And every single shot that we had um, went into the movie. And there were some shots that we that I wanted to be in there, but we but might have been just too much. And this is coming from a video that literally says, Anastasia, I'm going to come in your mouth. That's an actual line from the fucking book. I could not, I read that and I laughed so hard and when I read it to JJ, he fucking laughed and it was fucking hilarious. I thought it was going to be uncomfortable, it turned out great and that was one of the few videos which I thought was really surprising, surprising that we had on the front page of Reddit, but uh, it did really well and that video was a big part of, I think, me feeling good about stuff like 
content creation and, and, and things like that I can do. So the tournament goes on and, you know, we just keep casting. Grant arrives and we have so much fun when Grant arrives. You know, it was a, I think for a lot of us, we sort of hung out at other events that we've been to because, of course, we're Moon Duck, Moon Duck TV. But this is the first event that it's all of us been together without any other inf- like influences, like from JD or BTS or anything like that. This is the first event where we're all together doing our own thing, and we really, really, really had an amazing time. It was a lot of fun. The most unfortunate thing about that, though, is that halfway through the tournament, um, on the second to last day that I casted, uh, I got really 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 sick like i had a really bad it was pretty much flu like symptoms it was really bad it was very very bad and uh it kind of was a downer i think to like the entire group because we were having such a great time and all of a sudden i'm literally like shivering you know cold sweats um headache sinus infection kind of thing and I was super sick. And, like, I, I was so sick that I was just, like, I was huddled up, you know, fetal position on, like, this sofa this sofa chair. Everyone's nearby. And we're all chatting. It's like the living room. And I'm just, like, huddled up in the fetal position. And I just fucking pass out. Like, I just, like, I fall asleep. And, like, I'm, like, sweating. And I wake up. And I'm still, like, freezing from the fever. And all of a sudden, Nikki's right next to me. And she hands me this um, this cup of tea. And I was just like, oh, my God, this is amazing. Thank you so much. It was amazing. And uh, Nikki t- took pretty good care of me while I was sick. You know, and y- you'd think that with with uh, with it being hot out in Phoenix, with it being like 80 degrees, you know, I would be fine. But I don't know what happened, man. I, I, I usually don't get that sick. And it was really strange to see that actually happen. And I'm still getting over, you know, on the way back from uh, from Phoenix today, I was having some trouble. What's the name of this company? Is it like acting for like movies? The company I work with is called Moonduck TV and is a commentary studio slash content producer in the realm of Dota 2. And we have just run our first successful tournament. We have, uh, I think we reached a peak of 50,000 viewers for our tournament uh, grand finals, I believe. Um, I think we did a really good job. So yeah, our viewership was outstanding, I think, for our first major tournament. And it was a tournament that was with six figures. Um, It was very successful. It was very, very successful overall. There were a couple things we we needed to work on. And uh, the good thing about having all those people together um, and being the professionals that we are, we can change from having a great time and laughing about dumb shit to having a really important meeting after the tournament is over. And so we had a a post-mortem, as people call it, um, or just a a, a wrap-up where we just talked about what we thought we could improve on and what we thought was really good and really just in general, um, like what what we needed to change. And we talked, you know, we talked about a lot of stuff and we were really happy with the way the tournament went. Obviously, you know, we were, you know, one part of it. The other part is the teams, and then even another part sort of comes down to admins and stuff like that. So um, it's really important that it was actually successful in that regard. But so going back to the whole content creation thing, we had a very long conversation when we went out one night. We went out to get some pizza at a pizza place, a local pizza place. It was pretty good. I actually really enjoyed the pizza there, and we had a good time. And... um, we talked about a lot of stuff, but the biggest thing Slacks was talking about is like, okay, there's a, a role that needs to be filled currently in Dota 2. There's not many roles that are available. You know, commentary is pretty much, you know, all filled up. You know, funny videos, funny content is pretty much all taken. Um, you know, there's there's pretty much something for everything in Dota 2 right now in terms of content creation. What currently isn't filled, and he made this clear to both Grant and I, was a content producer for NA Dota and the history of NA Dota. And I was sort of indifferent about it because I'm sitting at the same table with Grant. First of all, let me, re- let me just tell you that I have the utmost respect for Grant and what he does because of the fact that he's been around forever. 
and he's always been kind to me whenever I've hung out with him, and I've known him since I got into Dota. Um, he was the first person I did a video with. He was one of the first people I casted with. I hung out with him at three TIs. So, Grant, if you don't know much about Grant, is somebody we brought in for casting for Moonduck for this tournament. He's been around since, I think, like 2006 or seven or something. And we just wanted to give him a shot. We said, like, you know, there's a couple of other casters we could bring in, but for the budget that we had and for who he is and how much he knows about Dota, we thought we should give him a shot. And, you know, he's, he's from Colorado, so it's a very short flight. He comes in and he nails it, essentially. He, he nails the casting. He's not an official member of Moonduck. I don't think he would want to be. I think he's really happy with where he's at in his stage of, the life, of his life. If he wants to be, I'm sure we could figure something out. But um, Essentially, he came in and he nailed it. And this was not a surprise to me. For everyone else, they were really surprised at how good he was as a caster. Grant's a good caster when he wants to be. He just has had this really... The biggest thing about Grant is that he doesn't want to be fake. And he wants to be loyal. And he doesn't like selling out. So anyways, back to the, me at the table with Grant and everybody else. You know, we're out at dinner and, and we talk about, okay, well, we need NA content producers. And uh, Slacks is like, could you imagine being at a panel being an NA expert? And I thought about it and I went back to ESL New York where I wasn't really... I was on the panel for the Archon series. Archon at the time was not a team I was really studied up on. It was a bit... It was kind of a newer iteration of Archon. Um, I've known for like Fluff and Whitebeard forever and I thought, um, you know, first of all, I don't have the same amount of knowledge as Milk and Merlini who were on the panel with me. But with that said, I thought I did pretty well given the fact that I'm not an analyst, not yet anyway. I'm not actually a Dota analyst. I'm a Dota commentator. I'm a play-by-play -play commentator and I think I'm pretty fucking good at what I do. I think I'm a lot better than a lot of people value me as, but I am, uh, I'm trying to become better as an analyst. And I've gotten a lot better because of the past couple of tournaments that I've done, Canada Cup, Captain's Draft. I've been watching a ton of NA Dota whenever I get the chance, and I, I usually do that. I usually do that all the time. And the reason why I wasn't particularly ready for the ESL New York um, when I was on the panel at ESL New York was because of the fact that I actually I took a vacation because I had grinded a lot uh, before and after TI. And so before ES New York, I I was doing content, I was interviewing EG, and I wanted to make sure that I, you know, I was focused on that. And then the whole panel thing was a secondary thing. And uh, so what ended up happening was that kind of shook me. Like when I did that panel at ES New York, I'm like, man, that's that was not good. And I didn't feel very comfortable about it. So, okay, I think now, like, okay, well, I have a lot of knowledge of NA Dota and NA Dota in general. But the problem is I've just not been in the Dota scene for that long. When you have somebody like Grant with, like, he's at the same table with you and, and Slacks is talking about content creation, I know Grant doesn't really, he likes writing articles because it, he thinks people will read an article and you can always go back to an article and it's going to have, all, you know, people love he just likes articles better. He doesn't really like the, the whole video medium in terms of content creation. Also, it's pretty difficult to do as well. And I can see where he's coming from. But for me, it's it's an it's a viable option. However, the thing is, like like I said, Grant's been around since like 2007, 8, maybe even earlier than that. Along with Spitwad, he is one of the earliest people in NA Dota's history. And so from my knowledge of NA Dota, starts around 20, 2011, 2012. You know, right when Dota 2 came out. Other than that, I had, I don't, I, you know, you hit, you have stories of what people tell you about any Dota back in the day, which I hear a lot from Grant. I hear for a lot from of the other pro players. I hear, I hear, I hear Han legends coming out from a couple of the Han players. And Dakota tells me about Han stuff like that. So that's the real thing I'm concerned about because if I was going to do a series, it would be about any history. At least part of it would be. And unfortunately. I just don't have that knowledge of NA Dota history, at least from the standpoint of like, I, I have the Dota 2 knowledge of NA Dota, but I don't have the Dota 1 knowledge, which is what I'm really lacking in. And I feel like it would be an insult to people from NA Dota 
like the people that have been in the the scene the longest, especially Grant. If I didn't either study up on it or if I just you know did it willy nilly, so that's what I was kind of thinking about the the whole time we were having that conversation. But Slacks, you know, I I've had a couple of conversations where I just I need to find you know a niche. I have to find something that I can do and I can and I can be good at and I can at least do really well and. Uh, so I'm trying to think like, do I want to do this? Do I want to do other types of content creation? When I stream, I usually get really tilted, you know, except for the times when I get drunk. No one really watches when I play other games. Um, I feel like I could do okay at streaming, but not enough to actually, you know, make a dent in the fact that I'm not making much money currently. <laughs> um, uh, obviously, the whole captain's draft will help, but I. I... So this is something I I didn't really want to talk about, but I kind of have to bring it out. I I really, I have to make a decision pretty soon, in regards to casting and in regards to making money. I feel like Moon Duck is going to be become very very big, and with that, I'll get him a lot more money but the bigger thing is like if I never get to cast a major again that's gonna pre that's gonna be pretty awful for me it's gonna be pretty terrible it's just unfortunate because you cast TI4 and you're like man I did really well or man like you know I thought I killed it and then you get snubbed for TI5 and then you get snubbed for the Frankfurt Major. And then you get snubbed for the Shanghai Major. And you're like, fuck, man. What am I doing wrong? Can you tell me? Hello? Like, Valve? Everybody else? Everyone that I've talked to recently has said that my casting has improved. But there are just... People are... A lot of people are just better, I think, at that, at that point in time. So, I just... It's it's really frustrating to be in a situation where I am where you're where you're barely making money, you know, you're making enough but not really that much. And you're not really getting the tournament contracts that you wanted. And a whole another big part of that is Dota Pit. And I'm not trying to be dis depressing, I'm just trying to come at you from a real standpoint and be like, Well, what the fuck do I do, right? I'm not saying I'm gonna quit. I would I'd much rather die than quit casting. But I have to find another way to earn money and uh it's gonna be tough to do that because with captain draft 3.0 will help it'll get us a lot of tournament contracts and i do have another tournament coming up it's obviously not going to pay that much i probably can't really talk about it but it's a pretty exciting tournament and the tournament name is outstanding so i can't wait to announce it but it's not really anything big for for us it's not really big it's not a big tournament you know it's the level of canada cup but in a different region kind of thing so I'm just trying to think about where do I go from here how do I and I'll, I a lot of this is just trying to take the criticism I respect purge immensely he's one of the people I respect most in the scene uh, I watched him a lot when he was casting a long time ago you know again I said this before to be working alongside a lot of these people and to actually achieve a dream of working alongside some of the most talented people in the industry is outstanding. But how do I translate that into getting better at casting? And so me and Purge had a, a real heart-to-heart -heart talk last night about casting, critiquing what I'm good at, what I'm, uh, what I'm not good at, what I need to get better at. And Purge gave me a lot of good ideas and he's going to continue to help me along that road. Um, but the one thing I'm really happy about with my casting, because I want to be positive about this, and the one thing that I think is really, really nice is that every time I cast with somebody new, more often than not, they will say, you are the easiest person to cast with by far very easy to cast with maybe beside like maybe with the exception of like ld and a couple of the more analytical casters and the analytical play-by-play -play casters there are certain casters who will often listen to somebody make a point and then just kind of go on 
and this happens more often than not with newer casters. Um, there are certain casters that will just the analyst will make a point, and the the play by play caster just goes on to the next play. And a lot of people think that's the way casting should be done, and I don't really agree with you, or agree with those people. Now, all of you know me, I'm not like the most highly skilled player in the world, but I feel like when it comes to watching the game, from my point of view, I know a lot more about what's going on than people, you know, people think. I have a very good eye when it comes to the game. I can't play the game at that level, but I have a very good eye when it comes to the game. Um, and so, if somebody makes a point, I want to transition that point into another point. I don't want to just continue on casting because that's just dead air. That's just that's an awkward transition. And I can't really give you an example now, but the next time you hear me cast, look for that transition instead of me saying, "All right, well, that yeah, we're gonna head top now." You know, Grant will say something like, "That was a great team fight, good black hole." You know, uh, really impressive play there. You know, the itemization, blah, blah, blah. And then I'll be like, yeah, okay, well, back to the top lane. It is a conversation to adopt. You're absolutely right. It's 100% a conversation. It might not be like that in real sports. It might be different. But back and forth is very important. It's a two-way street. You have to make sure that when you're casting, you're conversing with the person. Otherwise, the analyst is just like, I guess I'm just like throwing out bits of information and then, you know, that's it. That's not how it should be. You're telling a story and the best way to tell a story is to have a conversation about the game at hand because then you, as well as your co-caster, can talk about how the game is progressing from a story situation, you know, a story-driven situation, which I think is very important. Some of the games are shitty and you can't really make much of a story out of them. Other games are very easy for me to make a story out of. In the game where um, when Alliance was down to Vega in the second game, you know, you're looking at it and I'm just, you, you try to find any feasible, you have to go for the team that's the underdog. That's the biggest thing. You always have to go for the underdog. That might come off as bias, especially if I'm casting a uh, an American team and the American team is down. But you always, I feel like, I feel like if you're trying to make the best story, you have to always think about, okay, well, what's the, you know, how can they get back into this game? Do they have a chance? Where do they go wrong? You have to think about these things when you're casting. It's really a story that you need to tell. Um, and I think I learned a lot about casting when I went to the, to the hub or to the, uh, yeah, I guess to the hub, to the casting hub in Phoenix. I learned a lot about casting. And it's not often that you learn something when you've been doing casting for four years, which is, I feel like, a really long time. But I learned a lot, which is really good. Yeah, I think a lot of people think I'm biased towards NA. And I, I, I will admit that I definitely used to be. I definitely used to be a, a very NA biased, for sure. But I've actually gotten way better about that because I just really want to see good Dota, honestly. If I see good plays, if I see cool picks, I'm totally down, which is why I liked Vega a lot. If you listen to the Grand Final series and you see me on the couch, you'll often talk, you'll often hear me talk more about Vega than, than EG. I do praise EG heavily because I know them very well. I know their play style. I've been in the room with them when they're playing a Dota 2 game on multiple instances. You know, big Dota 2 games like the Summit. So I often have an inside peek into the way they play, how they play, and who they are. But... Um, it's getting... It's, it's definitely... I definitely like a lot of EU teams as well. You guys should really understand that I like a lot of EU teams. You know, I just have, I happen to have the luxury of casting a lot of American Dota. It just happens. You know, that's a thing. And I think Grant did a pretty good job as well. I think being unbiased. I feel like, I feel like a lot of the European, and this is really, really upsetting. 
I feel like a lot of European viewers won't give me a chance. I feel like a lot of European viewers will go back to when I was kind of biased. I will admit that I definitely was biased, but when I was biased against uh, uh, for NA teams, and they say, man, Mott sucks because of his bias, or he sucks because, you know, it's been a while since I've listened to him cast. And a lot of the European viewers will just not give me a chance. If you're an American viewer, there's a good chance you've seen me do Canada Cup recently. And you're like, damn, dude, he's actually really good at this. Like, he's done a good job. He, he knows what he's talking about. Like, Mott's done a really good job. If you're an American viewer, almost, I feel like a, a very large proportion of American viewers like my casting. European viewers, I don't really get to cast that many European games anymore, and that was the luxury I had with Dota Pit. I had European games to cast, and it was so good for me to be able to learn about the teams more, to cast the teams and that type of thing. But even though I'm not casting European games, I still watch them, and I still am impressed by a lot of the play. The Alliance run that they had and Star Ladder, and even in the beginning of Cap Captain's Draft, was outstanding, and I thought it was amazing. You know, I I, I really like OG. I really want, wish they were in our tournament. Um, Secret as well. Like, a lot of these teams, I love Virtus Pro. They're one of my favorite teams to watch. I've really enjoyed Vegas since Dota Pit, and so... I think people need to give me a chance. I'll get I'll get Reddit threads and people who be talking about casting, and I can guarantee you there's at least one OG or secret fan, or sometimes alliance, but they're they're more forgiving. Uh, one one secret fan, one G, one OG fan, or one alliance fan that is constantly complaining about my casting, and it's always them. Um, you can see because of the flare on Reddit, and almost no other flared up person. Like any other team, you know, any other fan of any other team really dislikes my casting. And they have every right to dislike my casting, but I don't think it's fair to criticize me for being biased because I don't think that's true anymore. If you want to criticize me for the way I talk, for the way I cast, for who I am, that's fine. You're more than welcome to do that. Absolutely. Um, because I, I am human and I can continue to grow. But if you criticize me unfairly or if you criticize me and I think it's unfair, I'm going to say something about it. And I want to make sure that people understand that it's really important that I, that you that that if you want to criticize me, do it uh, on a fair basis. Is what I'm trying to say. Did I learn that I'm far more awesome than the other clubs in Moonduck? I don't think that's true for an instant. Let me talk about Moonduck and let me talk about why the people that I work with are exceptional. I already talked about JJ earlier today or earlier in this video because he's a production god. And if anyone does doesn't believe that he's a production god. You're fucking insane. Slacks is one of the most um, hilarious content creators, and he was the driving force of our tournament. The production he did, the amount of videos, the amount of content he pumped out was outstanding. You may not like Slacks as a caster, which is completely understandable. He knows that people aren't going to like him. He doesn't have... He's got a very weird voice for casting. He's actually pretty good in play-by-play. -play. He, he does a good job when he casts, but you, I can understand if you don't like when he casts. But he's a funny guy. Suns fan has that banter that you're looking for as a caster. He's the in-between of somebody like me that's serious about casting and then somebody like Slacks that's a bit jokey. And Suns fan has been around forever, and he's got really great game knowledge. And not only that, he's a content creator like Slacks. He's the best of both worlds. Andrew is a very good host. He's an amazing host, absolutely outstanding host. And when he casts, he kills it, especially in teamfights. He's gotten a lot better. He's become an amazing individual All in all... In all aspects, he's a great host and he's a great caster. And on top of that, he takes care of a lot of the business aspects of Moonduck TV. And, um, well, Purge is Purge. I don't think I have to really sing the praises of that guy because that guy's been praised throughout the history of mankind. I was just talking about that, Rick. Um, and I think I do a very good job of not doing that. Thanks, Shadow. Appreciated. Isn't Dota Reddit pretty much the drama simulator? Uh, I mean, kind of. There are some really good points on Reddit. Reddit sometimes is very circle jerky, but other times is pretty good. My non-bias is bias in itself, but Reddit is filled with not not nice criticism that isn't productive or thought out. Uh, I sort of agree. I feel like there are times where people will discuss... like. Reddit, if they are really hating on a caster, they're really going to make sure that, you know, that caster knows it. But there will be people that have the voice of reason. They'll be like, let's give some constructive criticism here. There is the, 
you know, there's the occasional bit of nugget of information on Twitter and on Reddit that gives us that gives you constructive criticism. The other day, I think somebody mentioned to me on Twitter that I was talking a little bit over Grant. I was talking a little too much. I think that had a lot to do with caffeine that I that I because I, I don't drink coffee that much. But when I drink it, I get very jittery and I talk a lot. And so I knew that I knew that was happening during the cast during the cast. And when uh, I saw somebody, you know, I, I thought maybe I was fine, but somebody mentioned it beyond the cast and uh, on Twitter. I was like, OK, that's fine. I, you know, I got to fix that. So there is there is some good criticism out there. Uh, Grant's a good cast. He's a good cast. You should you should give him a chance. He he I think he needs to work on a couple of things. I feel like the biggest thing for an analyst is that they have to have a non monotone voice. And Grant doesn't have that when he's doing play by play and when he's doing his own stream, when he's chilling out and having fun. But when he's casting with me or other people that are super serious, he will have that monotone voice. Um, but he's getting a lot better at it for sure. Um, which is why I like Purge so much because Purge, when you think about Purge, you're like, man, he's got a deep voice and he's always just like this. I don't have emotion, but that's not actually true at all. Purge's ability to control the inflection of his voice is really amazing. He did improve a ton, and I thought that uh, I thought that was the case as well. So, essentially, long story short, I'm going to be doing. I'm going to try to figure out a way to produce new content. I don't know what it's going to be yet, and I keep saying this. I always think about doing it. Um, I, I like to talk more about Dota and just have like a. a Almost a daily Dota show would be would be really nice, but um, for now we'll see what happens in the future. We're gonna have a bit of a break. There's gonna be another tournament right around the corner. It's not gonna be a big one, but you know we'll see what happens. I'll be streaming here and there because I'll have nothing else to do. So if you have any questions, go ahead and ask. I uh, I got some time here. It's totally unrelated to Dota 2 Note. How are people saying Deadpool is the first R-rated movie from a comic? Is everything outside of U.S. like Judge Dredd just ignored there? Uh, yeah. I mean, I can't think of a good R-rated comedy, like a good R-rated action comedy film recently besides Deadpool, which I've not seen yet, by the way. That was another really shitty thing. They went to see Deadpool, and I didn't go because they, uh, because I was sick that day, but... Yeah, I mean, like, back in the 80s, you had so many really good R-rated action or action comedy movies. Like, they were so good. And just the way the movie system works now is just it's not... Other than, like, Tarantino, that shit doesn't exist, man. It's just, like, everything is PG-13 now. Why would you fucking make a Terminator film PG-13? What are you doing? Are you fucking retarded? Stop doing that shit. Genesis was awful. Genesis... So bad. All right, here we go. Are you expected to create content with Moonduck like? Well, yeah, I mean, we're going to do a lot of content with Moonduck. Sorry, that took me a second to, real, to figure out what the question was. Grab some European or even Chinese events to cast. I would like to, but obviously there's a lot of um, competition in Dota currently, so... Craig, you're a good dude, and I love you. I just wanted to let you know that. How did you find living in the house? Was it easy to get up and cast, or do you have to fight over whose turn it was to cast? We, generally, we don't step on each, each other's toes. I think we, give a very, we gave a very even amount of casting. One thing I wish that we did more of was having me and Purge cast together, which we did a little bit, but not as much as I would like, and having Shannon and, and Grant cast together, and having Zyri cast more because he only casted one series. Um, but that's kind of how it was split up. That's what would hap That's what happened when we made Moonduck was Zyra was going to function. Fu he, he thought about, he, I don't think he really wanted to do this, but he kind of like slid into the role of being a host and a business part, part of uh, Moonduck TV. So I would like to have gotten him more casts. So, so it wasn't, no, I mean, we, we got up, we didn't really have a schedule. Like we would like make a tentative schedule for the night before and be like, I'll do this series, you do this series. And it was often just me and Shannon switching off, which was fine. What 
Well, I don't want to talk about the the invites to the major because I just don't want to talk about it. Yeah, never mind. I don't want to talk about it. Not that I'm like upset about it or anything. It's just funny. Why don't you just kidnap Grant for kidnap Grant for example for a Daily Show? I mean, I'll ask him about it. I definitely will. Um, I don't know how we would make that work though. It's kind of tough. I agree. I think I think Andrew's a very good host, and the advantage he has over those two is that he actually plays and knows a lot about Dota in comparison. But uh, Red Eye does a lot of... Oh, Red Eye actually has learned a fair amount about Dota. He's put in the work, man. Um, Chilber is from LOL. He's a good dude, but he knows very little about Dota. I think, Well, I mean, that's not actually true. I don't know if that's the case. I just haven't heard of him host enough. I think he did, good, did great at TI, so... I don't know. Hopefully we see him more. And hopefully... I want him to switch over from League, but... He did play... He's been playing... Actually, yeah, that's unfair for me to say. He's been playing a lot... For When we were at the Mafia Land, he did play a lot of Dota with uh, some of the guys, which I thought was really cool. And I've seen him on Dota. Uh, I think he's on my friends list, and I've seen him on Dota a lot. But it's hard for a lot of really... For mall players that really enjoy the game, for them to switch, I think. Sire, he does not need his dread, dreadlocks back. Fuck. I'll be honest, I was not a huge fan of Zyra's dreads at all, and I told him that, I think, on, on multiple occasions. I don't understand why people really don't like Andrew's casting. I think it's good. Somebody told me it was about Ernesty. I just didn't know what people meant by that. I was like, what does that mean even? It's like, what are you talking about? I guess he has a lot of zingers and maybe people don't like that. I don't know. I think I think he's a, I always enjoy I I enjoy listening to him now more so than other casters, than a couple of other casters. Oh, I see what you're saying, Dong. Okay. So just like, yeah, I guess American proverbs and cliches, I guess that kind of gets lost in translation. How much time do you find yourself to actually play Dota? Do you, tr do you try to improve uh, your Dota play as much as your caster work? <sighs> Not really. I actually, I really like playing Dota if I'm playing with my group of friends. But otherwise, it's very stressful for me sometimes because I actually get very upset. I'm very easily tilted. It's tough. It's a really weird situation. I like Dota, but I I just I I'm almost scared to play Dota honestly because of like losing MMR, or getting too angry, you know, one thing or the other. So, I mean, I want to get better at Dota, and I uh, probably will continue to play a lot of Dota in the near future, but. Especially because I'm going to be streaming it as well, but yeah, we'll see. I'm going to have a couple more questions and then we're going to, we're going to head out for the stream tonight because I do need to get sleep. Oh, before we go to those questions, I read the first three volumes of One Piece, and I am hooked. And that is not good because that is a 900 chapter, like 600 freaking show anime or manga slash anime. I can't even imagine. Do I like uh, sci-fi series? A little bit. It depends on the series. Remember during the town, I would blow up sometimes. Yeah, 
I did I did get a bit angry, but I actually it's funny. People think that I got actually angry a lot of the time, but I really wanted people to believe that I was town. So I actually would get I would almost pretend to get angry. And I never had the chance to use that anger in a mafia role. Oh, I know. I, there was there was a lot more people saying, you know, a lot more people laughing than people saying cringe, I think, during the video. I was very pleased with the video, and if people didn't like I mean, it, it was mostly positive. It was positively viewed on Reddit. Our YouTube views were really good. I thought it was good, and that's really the only thing that matters, really, when it comes down to it. I'm just glad that something that I wrote and had a direct involvement with did really well. So thanks, Song. I appreciate it. The deal with One Piece is that it is the most popular anime and manga in Japan, and that is for a reason. <laughs> Should look. I've heard the expanse is good. I will try to check it out. All right, three more questions, and then I'm heading out. Hey Kyle, how do you think Slacks tries daily? How hard do you think Slacks tries daily on his content? He tries seeing it firsthand at the house. He tries very, very, very fucking hard. He will stay up all night to edit it if he has to. Luckily for him, creating the content comes pretty naturally because he is just that kind of funny guy. All right, thanks for watching, Dong. See you later. Excuse me. See you later, dude. I'll hide. I'll hide that. I'll, I'll highlight this and put it on YouTube. Do you enjoy casting or streaming more? Uh, definitely casting for sure. Way more casting for sure. I don't mind streaming, especially if I'm feeling good. But it's a lot harder to stream for me than it is to cast, which is weird. I feel like a lot of people would say the opposite. Because when I'm casting, I can just focus on talking about Dota. When I'm playing, I have to focus on playing the game and talking about Dota and talking about talking to people in chat. You know, it's it's really hard for me to um, juggle both of those aspects. All right, guys, if you don't have any more questions, I'm going to head out of here real quick. Um, it has been an absolute pleasure hanging out with you guys. I know I'm. It sounds like I'm a bit down today. I, I think is what you're probably thinking, but trust me, I'm fine. I'm just a little bit tired, and I will come back with more content and hopefully a little bit more streaming in the near future, um, and do some Dota stuff, do some other stuff. Oh yeah, if you if you haven't seen the Moon Duck Mautism emote, you are missing out. It is an amazing emote, and I like to thank Agare for making the emote. So if you'd like to get that emote, don't sub here. Sub over to the Moonduck TV channel. So definitely check that out if you want the Moonduck Mautism emote. Um, good night, everybody. See you guys soon. Bye.